6 o'clock, June 9, 2015, we're going to open the regular monthly meeting of the J.E. Township Water Authority. The meeting is being recorded for accuracy and taped for YouTube. Start with the <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Here, that is because Margaret Russell uh, quit with no notice on Monday, and Anita has decided to help us out, and we'll be reviewing the new schedule and other things later on in the business. So, are there any visitor coming? Yes. Question in a minute, in the last minute. Okay. If you research that, then we have an answer on it. Um. Readiness to serve charges for St. Joseph's Church. Yes, we did. And we have brought it down to one charge instead of two. There were two. So we, we so did. It's we, supposed to be one. Right. That has changed. Okay. Thank you for checking that out. Yeah. Uh, Where's that charge for? Right in to serve. Yeah, I mean, which, which facility is it? It is, we're only building the church now. For the church. Right. Instead of the church and the rec center. And before. And the rec. Right. Is the parse, the house included in that? Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's the rec center is separate. Mm -hmm. Separate. That's right. The church and all the other buildings right. are Everything on RTS. That. Yes. Instead of two that they have been paying. Now they all take the assumption. Of course, each plus the other two does that are two instead of three. I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any update on the Rosebud reimbursement? No. We're not finished yet, so we can't submit for reimbursement until everything's finished. Mr. Wagner corresponding with them though? Yes. Yeah. Um, both him and I have talked to some representatives. And initially they felt that the fifty thousand dollars that they gave us was all of their, but then we went back through the uh, commitment, you know, that we had in writing from them. And Tom had contacted them and advised us that we are better off to get a completion of work to put together a whole package to you know be more specific on reimbursement and amounts. At this point they're throwing numbers that you know that are confusing because we're not finished. And and they may have additional responsibilities, you know, with the wealth. So and what's the, you were talking about penalties, what's the deadline for the well being done? Well that again is going to come in later on to do a <coughs> modification on the consent order. Okay, no way. Um, and I, I didn't know Jeremy wouldn't be here. As chair of the Water Source Committee, I thought he'd give you a report. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this or if it's something that you want to check out, but Kim Baumfrey is at the meeting. She's the Elk County Water Specialist. Mm -hmm. And she said, and I didn't do any research on this, but I believe it's according to the Sunshine Law, that Water Resource Committee is your subcommittee. And you have to approve that ordinance before the supervisors do it at their meeting. Because she said, if, it, if it's challenged in court, it wouldn't stand up for sure because you, as the water authority, that was your committee, and if you don't approve it, it won't hold up in court. So I'm just passing this on for you. Okay. I mean, 
That's what Tim said. Jeremy knows it because she was telling Jeremy too. Oh, <coughs> uh, that's all I have. Okay. Well, with that, we, you know, obviously we'll have to talk with Jeremy and see what his take on it from there. And then I'll see if I can, you know, what I have to do on my part. Anybody else? Yeah. I'd like to thank Anita for staying and helping out. Appreciated by the customers, I'm sure. And Marty, thanks for, for leading the way here through all the, through all the thick and thin of everything. Uh, well, I, I appreciate the support I'm getting now from you know the members of this community to try to do a better job for you guys. So thank you. Okay, on the agenda. We are going to add the number three, a modification of the consent order. Number four, a continuation of services with Anita until we get a new secretary in place. And you guys said anything to add? No? No, it's lower. Okay, I need a motion to approve the agenda then. I like that. Second? All seconds. All in favor? All right. Those? Okay. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 12, 2015. Anyone have any changes, modifications, corrections? And a motion to approve the minutes. Second? I second. All in favor? things that obviously will stand out this meeting as opposed to last. You'll see in addition to the capital improvements deposit, that was from April's payments on the 30 cents per thousand transfer that we did now to try to build up our capital improvements account just like we voted on as part of the price the increase to the customer. Second is the $12,000 out of the m t account, which was payable to Hayrose Ventures for the easement uh, modification that we are going through at this point. And that gave us the right to go back to work up in that area. Although it isn't formally signed, they did approve everything. Is that a one-time deal, Marty? Yes, it is. And we were we were advised from our attorney that at that point it would probably be more of a cost factor to fight it and go on um, with the fact that we would be penalized financially for uh, penalties for not meeting our consent order on time and also the additional attorney's fees. And if it wasn't found in our favor, we'd be responsible for both attorney's fees. So. At this point, it just made sense. Like a lot of decisions we aren't happy about making, but for the good of it, to put it behind us, we felt that you know it was the right thing to do. So, And hopefully we can put it behind us and move on now. Um, the order basically was a protection type order for both of us, and, and that's how we worked it out. So we don't have to worry about it in the future or any other board or anything down the road for any repairs or anything that needs to be done up in that area. It gives us 100% usage from what we've already done and what we will do in, in the future in that area. And unfortunately, over the years, the paperwork has been misplaced or not filed correctly with the courts, so we weren't able to retrieve anything to you know, back up any of the maps that go back into the 40s. And it did put us in a bad position and words that were used like trespass and mistake, they really weren't because everyone that was working on that project were going by not one map but multiple maps of that area that gave us right ways and easements. And for the water authority to, you know, grunt that responsibility and the finger pointing, you know, at that level, 
they didn't do anything wrong. They were following what engineers and other mapping people had put forth for them to work with. And until this came up and people started to research and that gave the landowner up there an opportunity to become, you know, get more out of us, if you want to call it that. At some point, we, we did change a few um, directions, and that was, again, not our doing, but the DDP giving us an additional building to put up there, which we had to put on flat ground, which we would have had to go after the, the landowner anyway to get the improvements for. This just forced us to do it. So and him to settle anything on. in the future shouldn't be any problem. No, no. Um, the way it's drawn up, and, and I've seen the maps, they took the whole area in compass as opposed to just the 15 feet. And the only modification there is for EQT and their right away that's already been leased to them. We have to give them a certain amount of room to put up around it. And that was approved as part of that um, agreement. So we should be good to go. The EQT right away, is that for a gas line or what's it for? That's for the trucks. You know, basically, if you get up into the back. At this point, now, the initial maps that we saw showed gas lines going in and around that area, but that's been modified as far as what the information they gave to, to our attorney. Because, see, at one point in time, they were going to put the well pad down in those ones. So, you know, I can see that being reasonable for accessing it, but not the well pads up on top of the hill. That's up on top. And they're going to use the old P&N road, I think. Right, but they still want to have access if they have to to get in and out of there, and they're 15 feet or 20 feet. Yeah, but in the I mean, uh, I don't see the reason to get into the Burnsland watershed. I don't either. That's why it was basically a moot point, you know, for us. And like I said, because of us not having paperwork, it didn't afford us a good position for negotiation, you know. To retrieve that, and, and it goes back, like I said, to the original line that was put in. You know that that went through the property there. We couldn't find anything besides the maps to back any of that up. So, but from here on out, we shouldn't have to worry about it. And that was my goal: was to protect the water authority, you know, and the homeowners, so there won't be any more negotiating or battling for anything that needs to be done up there as far as access in and out to do anything. And also usage of that road, you know, to go from the well, you know, to the, the building for testing purposes. So I think it was positive or money well spent, if you want to call it that. Uh, excuse me, the, the approval of your minutes, that included the May 26th minutes? Yes. <coughs> okay, motion to approve the treasury report. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Rule of the bills. Question, Marty, number 35, when you're on that sludge, do you know what's stored? Yes. You know, where do they dump it up there at? Any idea? They still have a permit to dump it up in the back. That, oh. There's a little access road that goes in. Oh, okay. Is that the same we paid last year? Uh, no, I think it's what we paid last, last year. We think we paid two thousand last year. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the bills. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Um, let's see. Reimbursements for consent order. We don't actually do call it a reimbursement because the check was written directly out of the MT account. So you don't have to uh, make that motion. Correspondence. Brad Krause, permission to commence work on the well project and the easement agreement with Cables Ventures, catalog construction, job estimate for building footer and floor, and William Robinson, job estimate for building footer and floor. Okay. Delinquencies? 
Um, we sent out about 80 shutoffs. All but 13 people came after the shutoffs were sent. So Henry was given 13 shutoffs. Um, he turned to 10 people off. He collected payments while he was out from a few people. And everybody paid and got turned back on. We'll get to start all over again next month. Mm -hmm. Okay, maintenance report. Dennis, you have anything to add? Uh, <coughs> no, we uh, had a little difficulty today with the muddy water. Mm -hmm. We worked on the plant. And I started at 4.30 this morning and we got the plant back online at about 5.30 this evening. So it looks good to run all night now and we'll pick up some water. But, uh, it's just sporadic things when we get. We were, we were lucky we didn't get all the rain that everybody else got. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't get real money, but um, it took us a while to get it under control. But it's back online, making water. Uh, <clears throat> you're going to go over the uh, consent order uh, adjustments on there, and uh, I'll, I'll wait to do that and I'll make a comment on it. Okay. Mind. Sure. sure. Okay, the operator's report. Looks like we went through less this last month than and hours down on the plant. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Engineer's report. We've got some pad here. Do you have any questions? No, I would like to add one thing. Sure. Um, not the last month, but for SRBC, the one stipulation to their docket, um, we have to write a plan of proposing a backup water source. Mm -hmm. Now that our backup is going to be in use. Um, I was just wondering if anyone had any suggestions for proposed sites or if anything had been talked about beforehand. We have sent out some correspondence to different, yeah. Um, resources in the area and have really got nothing positive okay. as a backup or emergency and that was not just for this but it was for the other yeah. yeah for just kind of proposed possible sources just for SRBC's account I was going to say a possible well somewhere near the Gardner Hill tank because that would give us about the same kind of situation as there since they're both about same elevation, we wouldn't have to worry about any kind of extra pumping capabilities. I was going to suggest that and then possibly look or just propose an interconnected with boys. None of this is going to be mandated, just a proposed if right. if they would say anything then. Fills in the blanks by yes. our favor. Yeah. If if that's acceptable. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Old business, the status consent order. Same thing. Uh, we got an extension uh, due to the difficulties we had with the um, uh, land issue and the trespassing issue and the right of way issue. Um, by the original consent order, we should have had the well online yesterday. Um, I mean, we got set back a good six weeks. Uh, because of the difficulties we had, we couldn't get to the property to do anything. And, and we talked to DEP throughout this. We let them know right after it happened that you know, we're gonna have, we've got difficulties with access. And we can't get there because he said you put no trespassing, no trespassing signs up. So we can't get down there to work on it. We want you to know that. And, and Marty and, and myself and uh, Henry and uh, we've all talked to DEP's office in Meville about this. So they're aware, they were aware that it's not our fault that we didn't get this well done by yesterday. Um, so uh, with an, in addition to the consent order, they extended, <coughs> they extended the well until July 31st. So that gives us six weeks to get, get the well on. And one of the reasons they stated in there was that the authority expressed a concern that we needed to have the well online before we went in to replace the media and the filters. Because we have to do, we've got four sets of filters, and we have to do one at a time. 
if we did have the well as a backup and we took one set of filters offline, we had three filters, normal weather we could do that. But if we had water like we had today, uh, we'd have a really hard time getting that plant back online and keeping the tanks full of water for fire protection and water for the community. So um, they took that into consideration and extended it until July 31st, which, which was generous and we really appreciate the efforts that Marty did talking to them and, and DEP on that one. And they extended the uh, filter replacement uh, until the end of the year, uh, which was another break for us because uh, it would be a big push to get those two done by July, by the end of July. Um, June, well, beginning of July, actually. It, it would have been a monstrous June for us if we had to try to get both of those done. So we've got an extension on time. Uh, we're going to concentrate on getting that well in. We've got the pit dug. We need to get the floor board up there and get the building on it. And we've got some uh, very big connections we've got to make up there. So we'll, uh, I think we'll be able to do that by the end of July. So we're going to work on getting that on. Once that's on, that, that'll that relieve us when we do get bad weather like this and bad water, because it doesn't take a lot of rain to make that pretty dirty. All right, and if, if we get rain and it gets dirty, we can go to the well and use the well as our source. It won't completely supply the daily demand, but it'll be really close. So we can hold the, the tank level steady. Shut the filters off so we don't blow them up with dirt. And, and run the well for a day or two days until the stream clears up. And then put the plant and the filters back online. So um, it'll, be a, it'll be a great help in the operation of that plant. On, on, on keeping uh, water in the tanks for the community and for, and for fire protection. We always worry about fire protection in the tanks. You know, everybody worries about turning yeah. your spigots on, but if those tanks are low, or are way down, and there's a fire, and the firemen can't get water. That's, uh, oh. that's public safety, and, and that's yeah. our, our main, main emphasis in protecting the public so, uh, That's all I have to say. Do you want anything to add anything on that? Well, we're, we're obviously we're moving forward, you know, with it. We have two big projects, which should fall in place. We've contracted and spoken mm -hmm. with the Bookville Culling representatives, and they're on board on everything that is requested from the DEP as far as the, the permit and how everything's going to be done. It is going to be time consuming and labor intensive, but they're sure that they can get it done properly for us, and, and not being rushed now is going to help too because they, they did want to do visual inspections inside the tanks themselves, which we didn't get an opportunity to do the first time we tore down the first two trains. Um, as far as the monies, Anita's been working with me very close, and we are on track to be able to handle everything financially without going out and getting any more loans. I know that's been a big request and about refinancing the current loans we have. It's my personal opinion that we don't take on any more debt. Um, a big part of this authority, they've, they've been in effect over 20 years, and they haven't really run the authority as a profit type business, which it should have been. We should have had some money in the bank and not always depending on other resources coming in. We should have done that ourselves, which this last quarter we started to do for the future. We all know that everything's old, they're going to be breaking, they're going to need repairs, and hopefully we'll be prepared, you know, when they happen and won't have to stress out the authority, you know, financially anymore without putting any more on the, the consumers themselves financially. Uh, as far as our rates, you know, it's pretty much set in stone now what we're going to do as far as increases, you know, on a yearly basis. Um, just to let you guys know, I've uh, been brought to my attention that Penfield had voted for a rate increase for their people. They went from $7 per thousand to $10 per thousand, even though we only went up a dollar per thousand on their rate. They also went to a readiness to serve at $50 a month, which puts the average household in Penfield for a quarter for $200 a month if they're using 5,000 gas, or 2,000, 
$200 a quarter if they're using 5,000 gallons in that quarter, compared to ours in this township at $91 for the same usage. So people keep complaining about how high our rates are. I think they need to look around us and see what other people are, are paying. And we're still keeping the ceiling on it and providing full service to our customers. So on that, Marty, with Houston Township, from what I read and what I was told, a lot of they're raising the money because with the problem they put the new line in to pay for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's something they need extra money because they occurred that um, $800,000 bill or whatever it was. Right. Well, see, like I said, we incurred $700,000 for the upgrade on this and only had to go up a dollar. You know, and we're producing the water and paying for it and maintaining the plant at the same level. So, you know, I, I always look at everything around us to see what they're doing and, and how they're doing it. And it shows that the people that have worked for this authority and the board members have done a good job, regardless of what people think out there and how they want to point fingers at everyone that's been in this seat and, you know, long before I did. And, and they have to realize that we are only fixing the problems that were created for us. There's no one on this board or had been on the board you know, that long when all of this started. So to get to this point and have only increased the rates, you know, minimally, you know, to the consumers, I think it's been a good job for everyone that, that's been here. And like I said, it's not just me, it's everybody that makes these decisions. And they're hard decisions. We don't always go along with them, but they have to be made. And, and I just hope that the public, even though they like to bash us on the social media end of it, realize what a good job everyone has done here. You know, from the employees who get threatened when they go to do readings, to the guys going out to get do repairs when they're called out and are threatened. And it, it just, it's not acceptable anymore. I think the community needs to step up as a whole and start working together instead of against each other. And it's only a few people, you know, and it's the same ones that we have problems with with the meter reads, you know, and no meter reads, you know, or numbers. And all we want to do is get everyone online and, and have everyone pay their fair share. And some people are overpaying because, you know, I'd like to get everybody fixed and online and everything up and running. That's our goal, you know, replace the meters that need to be replaced or repairs the one. And it's up to the community to reach out to us to help us do that. So. It's too bad these meetings, all of our public meetings here in Jay Thompson aren't reported in both newspapers, the Daily Press and Courier. Numerous attempts have been made to try to get a reported here, but it seems they only come when there might be some excitement yeah. going on because, you know, some people go by word of mouth only and it's the wrong information. It, it um, usually is, or filtered. And which is the other thing, you know, you got your the nomination, you know, for supervisor, and if everything goes obviously as you're planning, you know, we're going to look to you. You guys are the ones that put people in these seats, and we are in need of people. And I think that is a supervisor's job is to go out and create that. If people aren't stepping up, you know, they have a letter, but they won't put them on the damn well, board. Well, see, that, that's the problem, and there's been too much personal issues exactly. that keep these people from doing a good job. We have educated people, we have hardworking people, we have dedicated people in this township that want to help out and have been turned down. And that trickles down from the top. You know, we had to go from seven board members down to five and four showing up. The sewer authority, I don't even know, they don't even up for a meeting. I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, and then it does start from the, at the township. It's like any business in the township, it's their business, the water and sewer, whether they want to admit to it or not. And it's up to those guys to make this work. And, you know, I'm glad to see you here, but it'd be nice to have, you know, the other people that can actually do something, you know, for us at this you, point. You have to work together. I mean, you can't vendettas in the past. I mean, Hey, we gotta. It's like a fight. You shake hands and you, and you go go your separate ways and right. put it behind it. And the next thing too, this stuff you're hearing on social media, and that, if 
If there's a problem, they should be sitting right here, mm -hmm. voicing their opinions. Well, that's like they always say, they want to blame me, blame me. I got big shoulders, I can I'll handle take it. Take anybody that's going to want one, I'll take. Like, so when you got to hide behind a computer, I don't go for that. <laughs> well, that's it. And usually the ones that are making the most noise are the ones creating the problems. Exactly. That and we're trying to fix. Yep. So. Yeah, but if you ask them to step off up to the plate and ask the supervisors to report them, who know. No, I don't have time for that. No, exactly. Again, I appreciate all your support and help you know, along the way. I do respect everyone's opinion in this community because you know a lot more about it than I do. And without your help, we can't make educated decisions. So just keep them coming. Well, we appreciate you answering our questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, new business. That doesn't happen at some meetings. <laughs> new business. We have the job estimate for the building and the footer. Uh, the two that we got, I asked Dan to give us something in writing, even though we had contacted him earlier. Um, Dennis had gotten one, but it was overkill. It was for building and everything else that we already had the building for. So we did give Dana the go ahead. Um, and I'd like to get a motion for the $4,800 as per his quote to do the foundation and the floor. So you can get stuck on it. I'll make the motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, there's been talk about a utility vehicle for transportation for the well, and we brought that up in meetings past, and I would not really like to do something for a vehicle but I think at this point, until the project is finished and we see where we're at in the checkbook, I don't think it, it would be advisable to actually go out and purchase anything. But what I will do is, is go out and try to get some quotes on vehicles and talk to Dennis and Henry on what they think would be the best uh, avenue to go as far as how to get there. What we're looking for is something where we can carry obviously chlorine and, and stuff like that back and forth to the buildings in bad weather. I don't think the you know, pickup truck is going to be viable transportation permanently there. And we'll also have to look at some type of a system to get those out of those whatever vehicle to get them into the building. But again, if we're a month or two from making that decision, but I want to let everybody know that we're going to start looking into it at this point. And Again, if anybody has any suggestions, you can get together with me and let me know what your needs could be. And a sleigh and reindeer would be an old in the winter, right? But yeah, I mean, winter, winter is what we're worried about, right? Because the, the roads are impassable in winter times. We need something else besides the truck's not going to do that right. Well, mm -hmm. especially with the additional weight that's going to have to be pulling yeah. up there. And, you know, we're going to need. Uh, I mean, does that be? another truck or anything, but it need another kind of vehicle to get up in there. Right. We'll, we'll look at that over the next couple of months. Okay, if you can, you know, do that and get, advise me so where sure. I, I know where to go with it. I appreciate that. Okay, number three, modification of the consent order. Dennis, you did look at it. I yes. did. I looked at it. Um, have you guys? Mm -hmm. We reviewed it. This is basically a formality requesting additional time which the DEP said that they had backed already the conversations with Lisa. And like Dennis said, they've been on board with us ever since the day Eric left and we were having problems um, getting up there to do the, you know, complete the work that we had started. So I, I feel good about getting the extra time, although I'm hoping not to use it all. But it gives us a little bit of a, a cushion and preventing fines again, which has been major. And I know Christine, you were a big part of that, getting the first extension. And Rick, you know, what we had to go through just to get to there. So we get an extra 30 days, and it's like giving up your first child, you know, with the DEP. Yeah. So. But I need a motion to accept the modification so I can get it up to tomorrow <coughs> sign and get it filed. I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gary. Okay, number four, the continuation services, and I figured that would be the best way to put it. Um, 
what I talked to Anita about is instead of a four-day part-time week, have her come up on Mondays and Wednesdays and do full days to get the job done. Wednesdays, obviously, because it's payroll day, and Mondays because everything that happens over the weekend to figure out what's going on. It, it will affect the consumers as far as making the payments and stuff, and we'll leave a note in the door to drop the payments, you know, probably down at the plant or whatever, and your normal hours down there. Could we put, so a, that, drop, could we put a drop box maybe? You know, we something? talked about cutting a hole on the side and putting a box or something. No, in there, yeah, you don't want to do that. You'll get something in the swamp. Yeah, and same thing if we put just a, a regular box outside, sure. element controlled. So we did look into that in the past, and it didn't seem like a viable. I suggestion. Sorry. But the thing is, there'll be longer day hours, which will give people more of an opportunity actually to get there. And we'll see how it goes. And, and it's going to be uh, hopefully temporary until we can, you know, find a new secretary. Um, Anita has checked with Joe. Sure. Like. And I'm going to make a call tomorrow to the business school in New Boys to see if there's any accounting type students who would be a little more familiar with the computer and it. I think that was the biggest problem that we had was their computer skills were not what they were sold to us as and she was a little bit afraid of it. Um, well, you know, we have always tried to get any of our employees from this area. I mean, people need to work. You know, they want to work, but we haven't been successful, you know, with the, the people that have come to the to us for interviews and everything. But that's our hope, because we get somebody locally, so there's not a great expense travel-wise and everything. But a student, you know, from this area that can work, you know, part-time and still do classes, you know, and, and work towards whatever education you're getting could be helpful on both ends, you know. What days were those? Monday and Wednesday. And what? Eight to four? Yeah. So we're only going to lose you know, a few hours. Yeah. How many people usually pay their bills at the office roughly? It's really not a whole lot. Most of the payments come in through the bank or through, through the mail. Have a few, you know, that come up. and. Then, that's usually when it's shut off time <laughs> is when they come up to yeah, pay themselves. So. That's the major walk in when I've been there. People that are, you know, on the brink. It's not just a normal come in and do a check or whatever. That's usually cut through the bank. So. But it's just about being there, you know, and keeping up with the paperwork and the correspondence and, you know, the emails and, and keeping us abreast on what's going on. You know, heard it forward stuff. You know, from Tom because everything does go into the office here as opposed to us directly. So. I've heard of some discussion already with these delinquencies. A lot of the users on the water system would like to have uh, monthly bills because a lot of times they're hit with all these big bills all at once. And uh, that no puts problem. a damper on a lot, of them. a lot of them would like to see monthly bills. I don't know if it's feasible, but this is what I hear. Besides the businesses, you know, that use a little bit more water, it really doesn't fluctuate on the consumer end that much from quarter to quarter. Right. You know, what I can see. And they know and, 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 and the bills aren't that much. Most of them are, you know, at or under hundred dollars. So doing it on a well we have so many delinquencies, you have to that's, put the lines together and see what's going on. See that's the problem. If they would pay on time, it would cost them less than paying late. Because yeah. they're paying the late fees, they're paying the shut off fees. And they're thinking that their water bill is two or three hundred dollars when it's all the excessive ends and charges on that instead of just paying the bill. And we do work with the customers in this area, you know, on payments. I, I couldn't tell you how many. I'm opposed. I write as few checks as possible. It's painful to write. Right. Checks. So one I'm every quarter write is fine. One check per quarter mm -hmm. and one every month. No. So I mean they know when they're getting it, so well that's it. They can't and, and like I said, it's, it's only excessive when they're not paying it on time. Mm -hmm. and, and our goal is to get everyone to pay on time. Obviously, money in the bank faster for us, and we can do more as opposed to waiting each day to see what we have to you know, work with. Uh, this next quarter, because of the changes, we'll see how you know that pans out because you're going to have the additional charges on, 
on seven or eight, you know, different businesses. Some will be in what we've given up on the back side, like for the church and stuff. So hopefully it'll balance out and people get on time. And that's all we ask, like, you know, any of the bills. They have to realize this is a utility. And without those, you have nothing. Like the electric, if any of you looked at your electric bill this month, it went up a penny per kilowatt hour, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. But I use 18,000 kilowatt hours in my business. So it's $180 to me this month, just in one month. I, I don't have, I can't regulate that. I still have to keep my lights on. I still got to keep my coolers, just like you guys. You can only cut back so much. We don't do that. We have consistent billing, you know, in ours. So it's easier to say it's going to be $100 every three months. And, and it's just a matter of wanting to pay it in one time. Well, the other thing they don't get is, and I don't know why they don't, it's costing them more. Exactly. By being delinquent, I We don't want their additional money. We just want what we earn, you know, through this, the work that we do. Another question for Dennis. Once they get this well online, yes. um, the capacities of this pump that's been sitting in the ground up there, Yes. That's been questionable. Yes. We don't even know if it's functional. That's cool. Well, it's functional because they did a drawdown test a couple last year. Okay. So they know how much it pumps and, then, and they checked some sample wells around uh, at different pumpages on the, on the drawdown of the well when they run it at different pumpages. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the question is, was the original pump that's there um, we think it was designed to pump from there down to the plant, which is it's a 300, 300 feet pump, deep. Yeah. But it was designed to pump up at least 300 feet, and the rest of it was level, almost level down to the plant. Mm -hmm. well, now we're adding another 300 feet in elevation to get it up to the tank. We have some we need to, we're going to have we need to pull that pump out to see what the capacity is, what the horsepower is, to see if it has enough power to push that up that extra 300 yeah. feet to the tank. That's, so, what I, that's what I thought, that we should get the, the uh, spec book from the installer to put the pump in the ground to see what the well, they have, I think, are. I think, the, I think our attorney has some sheets from Rosebud who put that pump in, but there's no specifics on horsepower and capacity of it. It was just a general description of, yeah. of the well, of the pump. Yeah, whenever they buy a pump, though, you usually get a packet that comes with your product to tell you what it is. You know. Yeah. So well, somebody. Well, I don't know. What that's been that's been a while since that's been in. So I'm not sure if anybody knows yeah, where that is. So. Well, I mean, we still I mean, we still have to pull the pump. Bob, you got an answer on that? Or well, on first that? of all, you got invoices if you go back mm -hmm. to 2008, 2009, and I know right. they had a service guy up here to performance test that pump, see if it runs back. So I, I go back to the invoices and, uh, and see what it is and the design specs for that pump. We, we can do and, that internally uh, there. I, I think there might even be a report of his findings when they did the pump test. Uh, I'm sure there's a report I saw. Well, it's all part of the uh, geological testing and everything, too. I saw that in his report. Yeah, I don't know if the pump's in there, but uh, holy cow, I went through no, the invoices. The, you can't find the manual. Well, the amount of water and everything was as part of his report on what they uh, considered it was a reasonable draw. And stuff, well, so. like Dennis is saying, though, you guys determine the head mm -hmm. to see if you can make the boost up there, yeah. or whether you're getting the secondary pump. Well, we, at the corner, the, the other problem, the, yeah, the other problem we're running into is the SRBC, Susquehanna so River Basin Commission, who we had to get permission from to drill the well because we're in that river basin. All right, they've got some crazy regulations and requirements. All right, they want a picture of the pump we're going to use. Don't you think the manufacturer has a picture of that pump? Yes. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, don't get it. We, 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 we have to find out specs, who the manufacturer is. So. Parts assembly and everything else. You can, you can dial in with the well, like, like, like you said, so. we, we, we have to have that some paperwork in there yeah, to I mean, show what the initial pump. install was and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. they want to pull the pump. Well, yeah, we have to pull the pump anyway. So Why? Why? We have to get specs off the pump. Well, we that's our, that's our BC is not going to take our word for it, and I don't think they're going to take our word if, if, I'm if, sure. we, if we show them a, a, a pamphlet. So this is the pump that's in there. Well, you show them an invoice here. Here's what we bought. I want to find the invoice and see what it says. Yeah, let's, let's start 
start at the bottom and work our way up to yeah. see if we can get paperwork on it, find out what it is, right. and see what we have to do. Mm -hmm. there, there should be a, there. Yeah, there should be a picture of the pump on a brochure when mm -hmm. we sold it. Yeah, we just yeah, gotta find out whether we purchased it. When, we when, we when, when, was, when was it put in? Yeah, that was me. That's gonna be the next thing. Yeah, yeah. That'll be the next thing. We'll find out when we'll hire you. That's the pump on the ground. You know what I mean? Did they pull out? Oh no. Yeah, that's what I mean. We don't know that. We get most of it up there. They put in that EFD or not a EFD. They have sauce or only. Well, like I said, let's go back to the invoices. Yeah, yeah, we'll start with invoices. Then we'll start questioning. Well, I like the invoice. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to the invoice. Rosebud was the only one. And you guys are going to invoice. Yeah. Okay, I need a motion to have a need to continue your services with the change in uh, work days. Make a motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain. Opposed? Okay. Takes care of our. Regular meeting. Any other comments? Uh, we'll we'll have to re-advertise for another second. We are. Yeah, yes. Very yes. 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 Yeah. And like I said, as soon as we can get viable people to interview, we will get it. So we're not stressing and need it out. And I'd like to reiterate the fact that we appreciate all the effort that she has put in to this job, getting the office straightened out being 100% reliable man over and above everything she did. Um, she doesn't have to do it, and it's just to help us out here in the community. So I hope other people you know, appreciate the job she's done and, and are going to continue to do for us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully temporarily. Are you going to defer her mileage? We, we did that as part of her agreement to come back up and continue working with the okay, previous so secretary. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna make sure that she's not hurt financially yeah. by no, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not disputing it, it just yeah. wasn't part of the motion here. No, that was part of her yeah. continuing to help out. But you did that at the last meeting. At the last meeting. Yes. Okay. Another bit of information for Dennis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've recently heard that uh, Penfield has discovered some huge water leaks that they're going to undertake and get repaired, which will help on your production of water over there at the building. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard that yet, but yeah. that's that's one of the new topics in Penfield right now. They found some huge leaks up there. Mm -hmm. where it's at, I don't know. Well, since they put the new line in there, their draw from us is, is significantly decreased. Uh, since last year. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so, going to decrease. Which is, more which is, which is good for them, but bad for us on yeah, finances. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> uh, I do have one more thing I'd like to say. And, you know, Eric has been gone a couple months, and we've had some <coughs> people step up to help us out on the operator end. And obviously, these group has, has come in and helped us out, too. We've got two good employees working for us now who show up for work and do their job and are very pleasant about it, but we've forgotten how much Eric actually did. And when we approved the bid earlier in, in the uh, month, I didn't realize at the time, but how much money that we're spending extra by not having Eric. And when he was there, we were talking between forty and $60,000 to complete the project because of all the stuff that he was going to take on himself to help get that completed. And without him here, we're now spending $104,000 to have Brookville do the whole job. So everyone always complained about how much he made. And I had people come into my work and ask me if Eric really made that much. They didn't realize the 105 hours a week he was putting in, in holes and doing all the jobs while he was here and how much he could have saved the water authority if he had chosen to continue to work here. But I, I just want to let you guys know that I appreciate him. I hope you guys, you know, did while he was here, you know, and, and the job that he did and how much he, he did save the authority over years by stepping up and doing this work for us. So. That goes back to Rick's you know, response there where the, the supervisors have to work together with the authorities, which it's not really happening at the moment. And hopefully they will. Let's see. Need a motion to adjourn.
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.